tonight we're going to we're considering um, the building of adaptive forests in the area of climate change. This is with the generous assistance of the Department of Agriculture, Food and the Marine. So here's how our evening is structured. I'll introduce the main speakers. We'll have a quick intro to CCF from Liam, Chair of ProSilva Ireland. Then on to the main content, a presentation titled Continuous Cover Forestry for Resilient and Productive Forests Under the Impacts of Global Climate Change. This will cover the fact that European forests are increasingly at risk due to the effects of climate change in combination with the consequences of historical forest management approaches. Continuous cover forestry offers an alternative strategy that may become essential for, for future forest survival. We we'll have a short panel discussion after that, which will bring us up to 9 p.m. Your questions um, are welcome in the chat window at any time. Um, we'll address these in the general discussion section of the night. We've allowed a good bit of time for this, as you can see. Hopefully you all have lots to say. We wrap up a little bit of info then about other pro silver events. So on to the introductions. So I'm Anna Brown. I'm a pro silver member. I'm a forest owner since 1995, and I'm an IT professional. I'm delighted to be in such knowledgeable company tonight with Dr. Oops, sorry, Dr. Pavel Bednarsh. He's a researcher for the Forestry and Game Management Research Institute in the Czech Republic. He comes from a forestry family. His father and brother are also foresters been a member of ProSilva for 13 years. He's a number of specializations, among which are uneven age silviculture, forest dam transformation, forest tending and regeneration, ecological demands of different tree species with a mixed forest dams, and how to enable a variety of tree species to maximize their potential in a forest mixture. Next up is Pariko Tuma. He trained as a forest with the Department of Forestry and worked there and in Quilche for 35 years as a forester, district manager, and part of Forest Productivity Manager. For the last five years, Porik has worked as a private forestry consultant in the southwest of Ireland for private woodland owners, with main areas of interest being CCF and broadleaf management. Porik has been a long-standing member of ProSilva Ireland, has previously served as chair. He's currently serving as secretary of the ProSilva Europe Executive Board. And last but not least, we have Liam Byrne. He's the current chair of ProSilva Ireland, and he's a woodland contractor and sawmiller. Like Pavel, he comes from a timber-focused family. He just completed a second thinning in my woodland in Kildare, and he was a pleasure to work with. So I'm going to hand over to Liam now for a short introduction to continuous cover forestry. So Liam, you're up. Okay, thank you, Anna. And uh, thank you for your very professional job in moderating this evening and chairing events um, and providing technical support. Um, on behalf of Silver Ireland, I would like to welcome you all to our webinar. I'd particularly like to welcome our loyal subscribing members. We look forward to meeting and engaging with you at our field event, which we're so happy to see back on the calendar. But sadly, the reduction in the impact of COVID-19 has been followed by war in Europe. As part of an international federation of ProSilva, this evening we are thinking of all those affected by current events, particularly those who have lost their lives, lost family and friends, those injured and those displaced. To those of you who are new to ProSilva Ireland, we also we extend a warm welcome. And those of you who are well familiar with me, with ProSilva and are members of the organization, um, just bear with me for a minute when I just like to take a minute to define um, what ProSilva is about and the principles behind it. ProSilva Ireland is an all Ireland organization that promotes continuous cover forestry and the adoption of lower impact silvicultural systems. Continuous cover forestry aims to integrate multiple forest functions while maintaining a permanent forest structure, thereby avoiding clear felling. These functions include protection of soils and water, enhancement of natural habitats and ecosystems, uh, promotion of diversity and resilience, enables carbon sequestration, and most importantly, all, provides all these functions while also providing the opportunity for the production of quality timber. CCF may also allow for non-timber activities such as food foraging, recreation, tourism, uh, 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 tourism and other cultural outcomes. By working, by working closely with both natural processes 
and measured human interactions. We can enable people working in our forest industry, people in our local communities, a wider society, connect meaningfully with our forests. Ultimately, the Pro Silver Principle supports forests which are both ecologically and economically sustainable. Pro Silver in itself is a not for profit organization founded in 2000 and is part of a wider international network of Pro Silver organizations across 27 different member countries. We enjoy a diverse and dynamic membership of foresters, forest owners, contractors, colleges, wood engineers, scientists, artists, and many others. Our general activities include field days, international study tours, training, publications, and engagement with forestry and other relevant groups, both statutory and non-statutory. I believe that it is the international dimension of Pro Silva that makes us unique, being able to share vast experiences through international collaborations, study tours, visiting guests, and sharing of publications and training tools. And it's this very network that makes this even possible. I would like to thank Pavel Benner for this evening's presentation and all the work he's put into preparing it, and for taking his time for sharing his extensive knowledge with us. So welcome, Pavel. Pavel is no stranger to us, as we, ver as we first met on a study tour to his country, the Czech Republic, back in 2013. Since then, he has been a visiting guest of Post Silver Ireland, uh, joining us on our field days and delivered a seminar at UCD back in 2019. Never before has the effect of climate change and associated risks and the importance of developing resilient forests been so important. So now what I'd like to do is hand over to Pavel and we'll sit back and enjoy his stimulating presentation. Thank you, Pavel. Thank you for, very much for your uh, invitation and introduction of my person. Uh, I will uh, share the screen. Well, uh, I'm uh, very glad and uh, also uh, satisfied that uh, and and, uh, and a bit uh, surprised how uh, big uh, audience of you are here. So hello everyone. Uh, and uh, I would like to talk about uh, the issue of continued cover forestry uh, uh, for resilient and productive forests under impacts of uh, global climate change. Um, just very briefly, uh, global climate change is represented uh, mainly through the uh, rapid uh, increment uh, of uh, air temperature, uh, CO2, concentration and concentration of uh, other uh, greenhouse gases, uh, gases uh, uh, by changes of uh, precipitation and mainly uh, through uh, extremes. Uh, when we are talking about extremes, uh, it uh, means mainly uh, in terms of both uh, temperatures and uh, precipitation. Um, so for uh, forestry uh, consequences, uh, as I said, mainly uh, temperature, uh, precipitation and their extremes uh, are uh, crucial. I forgot, sorry to mention here, um, of course, uh, in the past, the climate uh, was also not uh, constant uh, during the uh, glacial cycles, uh, both in glacial and interglacial periods. Uh, there, uh, there were, uh, yeah, so uh, let's, let's go to, to this slide. So, uh, yeah, uh, the extraordinary, uh, the extraordinary is the intensity, how uh, the uh, the ma many entities of the uh, of the climate is uh, changing uh, right now uh, on on the left uh, and of course uh, that's uh, clear evidence of the no uh, I like them today and um, no reply yeah now someone is talking. Uh, Sorry, I just I just muted. I'm sorry about that. Uh, yeah, sorry. Uh, so uh, I wanted to say that there is a clear evidence of uh, of uh, uh, human activities uh, 
changing the, the climate right now. Uh, on the left, you can see how uh, the temperature uh, ha has uh, been changed uh, for the last, uh, let's say, 135 years. Uh, so that's something extraordinary uh, compared to uh, what was he uh, here, uh, what was here uh, about the uh, oscillation and changes of climate in the past. Uh, even worse uh, are the uh, scenarios uh, for the future. On the right, you can see uh, some of uh, such scenarios in terms of uh, heat wave days uh, frequency. Uh, the situation for the period of uh, 2021 to 2050 is, uh, let's say, acceptable. However, if we would uh, look on the situation uh, uh, for the period of 2071 to uh, one uh, to 2100, uh, the situation is much more dramatic. So for the forestry, temperatures, precipitation, and uh, extremes uh, in these two entities are uh, crucial. Uh, then as a consequence uh, of uh, these uh, uh, climate changes, uh, we are uh, we are uh, getting to the situation uh, uh, when uh, uh, the uh, these shifts uh, pass the uh, let's say um, uh, mortality threshold. Uh, so the future uh, conditions uh, will be past uh, the border of uh, of this uh, of this uh, mortality threshold, and the vegetation will uh, grow. Uh, uh, Behind this uh, this uh, this border, uh, in much uh, much uh, extreme uh, growing conditions, uh, there is a, uh, there is some example of the uh, situation from the Czech Republic. Uh, on the left side, you can see uh, the increment of uh, annual temperatures. Um, you can see that there is a clear trend in terms of uh, increment of annual temperatures. Uh, if we would compare, let's say, last uh, 30 years uh, with the period of uh, 1961 to 1990. However, if we would uh, look on the uh, figure of uh, total uh, annual amount of precipitation, uh, there is uh, no clear trend uh, in this um, uh, 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 climate characteristic. Uh, on the other hand, uh, uh, there are changes but uh, these changes uh, occur at the level of distribution of uh, uh, precipitation within the year. And there is a, a particular example, uh, the same uh, figure as I uh, showed you on previous slide, uh, we can take, um, uh, we can take uh, example of the year 2017 that uh, seems to be uh, absolutely normal standard average year in terms of uh, uh, annual amount of precipitation. Uh, however, if we would uh, look uh, at the detail, how the situation uh, look in the mid of uh, growing season, it means in July 2017, uh, you see the map from the project of uh, Intersucho uh, that uh, there was a clear uh, soil water content deficit. Uh, as, uh, if we would uh, uh, compare the situation uh, of uh, whole soil horizon from uh, zero to 100 centimeters, uh, more than 70% percent of uh, uh, our country was uh, uh, under some uh, kind of uh, water deficit. And even worse situation was if we would consider uh, upper uh, soil horizon from uh, zero to 40 centimeters. So to very briefly conclude this, there are no changes uh, uh, in total um, uh, annual amount of precipitation, however, rapid changes in their distribution. Uh, as a consequence of this all, uh, there is clear uh, increment uh, of number of uh, extremes events. There is a clear, uh, there are decreasing, uh, or there is decreasing uh, the water availability. And uh, of course, uh, uh, the water utilization for the vegetation included forests uh, is uh, limited. Uh, in the Czech Republic, uh, through these uh, uh, consequences, uh, uh, there, uh, there uh, took a place uh, large 
scale disturbance by uh, Bart Vito. Uh, we still have to remember that uh, this situation that happened uh, uh, must be considered as uh, the uh, disturbance through secondary disturbant agent uh, because uh, the bark beetle uh, in this case was not uh, the primary agent. Uh, the primary agents are uh, impacts of global climate change uh, that are uh, that cause the uh, physiological stress of uh, trees and uh, this all was uh, in combination with so let's say uh, forestry uh, approaches uh, which uh, uh, which means uh, uh, tree species composition of forest stands, forest structure uh, of the forest stands, and uh, the ways, uh, or let's say, forest management systems, the ways how the forest stands were managed uh, in the uh, in the past. Some uh, pictures uh, only to show you uh, the real situation. Uh, believe me that this is not the uh, worst example. Uh, there are. Uh, plenty of areas uh, where the situation is even worse. Uh, however, you can see uh, really uh, large scale disturbance uh, uh, on one of such uh, areas uh, in our country. And on the uh, right side, you can see some pictures from the from the video uh, that uh, uh, that that was uh, uh, in the spring uh, 2019. Uh, and was showing uh, the abundance of bark beetle in a pheromone trap. Uh, you see the, the abundance was uh, absolutely uh, unbelievable. So uh, consequences for the forestry. Uh, there, is the, there are uh, two figures of, uh, uh, of um, uh, total uh, annual harvest in the Czech Republic, that's the black line um, showing uh, that uh, in the past uh, uh, the average annual harvest was about uh, 16 and a half million cubic meter per year. However, uh, since uh, 2015 there, there is possible to see dramatic uh, increment of, uh, uh, of total harvest and you can also see that this was caused by salvage felling, the, the, red, uh, the red line. And uh, only for your imagination, the purple is uh, Norway spruce. So you can see that uh, Norway spruce represented in the past and uh, also represented now uh, during the uh, bar large scale disturbance majority of uh, harvested trees. Uh, this uh, small figure on the, uh, on the left side is only showing that uh, really conifers represent uh, more than 90% of uh, annual harvest uh, uh, for a very long time, and uh, that the uh, total annual harvest of uh, deciduous uh, tree species uh, was uh, or is uh, long term more or less uh, constant. Uh, in Czech Republic, we consider uh, the year uh, 2015 as some uh, trigger of this situation, despite also the year uh, 2014 was also drier, but uh, uh, 2015 was extremely dry. Uh, and uh, we really take this as a, as a trigger of uh, following development. Uh, however, also uh, following years 2016, 17, 19 and 20 were uh, very dry years. Uh, only uh, two compare the situation of uh, salvage felling in 2018, you can see that it, if the, we divide uh, uh, the salvage felling to, uh, to particular regions of our country, uh, the intensity uh, correlates very well with, uh, uh, with the uh, areas where the uh, draw stress was the highest. Uh, on the other hand, you see that the uh, the draw stress in August 2015, if we would talk about the upper soil horizon uh, from 0 to 40 centimeters, was actually within the whole country. Uh, here only, uh, only uh, the, the, uh, the, the same in terms of that uh, uh, the salvage felling is divided, is distinguished uh, 
uh, on um, uh, insect uh, uh, salvage felling and uh, salvage felling uh, due to uh, 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 abiotic uh, agents. In the past, uh, it was uh, uh, characteristic, uh, it, it was typical that uh, uh, abiotic uh, agents were, uh, were prevailing in the past in the Czech Republic and uh, our forestry was, uh, let's say, under control of, uh, of uh, abiotic uh, disturbance agent, uh, agents. Uh, since uh, 2015, the situation uh, was shifted and uh, insect salvage felling, felling started to prevail. Uh, yeah, this is the situation uh, in the past. It was uh, typical. It was typical uh, picture for uh, our forestry. There were uh, plenty of uh, uh, plenty of uh, wind uh, um, uh, windfalls, and uh, um, many forests as well were also disturbed by heavy snow. So continue cover forestry, uh, and uh, it's uh, it's. Uh, uh, benefit for uh, this uh, for this uh, uh, tricky situation. So, is continuing cover forestry a solution uh, for the future? Uh, and uh, how uh, continue cover forestry prevent and mitigate described scenarios? It means in terms of uh, large scale disturbances, and uh, through which entities does it deal with uh, these forest threats? So, in general. Uh, Human society requires uh, requires to have uh, forests that are uh, that that have low uh, susceptibility for damages, and one of the uh, tar main or crucial targets of continued cover forestry is uh, to have uh, forests uh, that are resistant. So uh, let's look on this uh, particular issue mainly through. Uh, the lens of uh, forest mixture and uh, forest uh, permanent cover. Uh, you can see here uh, when we would talk about uh, tree species composition and the necessity for conversion, how the situation in the Czech Republic look, uh, looks uh, more than 50% uh, is represented by Norway spruce when we are talking about uh, cover, uh, forest cover, if we would talk about uh, harvest uh, in the last 20 years, uh, Norway spruce represented more than 77%. Uh, also, uh, Scots pine uh, is uh, ha having uh, much higher uh, portion compared to its, to its natural uh, share in, in, the, in the forest. And on the other hand, uh, uh, broadleaf tree species and, uh, for example, silver fir uh, has a much lower portion co compared to what was in uh, in old growth forest and uh, what we would uh, wish for the future as some midterm target. Uh, but, uh, uh, when 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 we look uh, on this uh, figure, uh, first of all. We actually uh, wager on um, uh, tree species that is uh, extremely uh, vulnerable uh, to, uh, uh, to different disturbance agents. Uh, on upper figure, you can see that uh, uh, Norway spruce, uh, when it's uh, when it's uh, uh, evaluated uh, in terms of its uh, uh, vulnerability for uh, damages by wind and snow, it's on the first position. Uh, however, we are talking about vulnerability uh, of these three species in pure even age stands. Uh, if we would uh, look uh, on the situation about uh, insects, uh, uh, Norway spruce uh, is on the second position uh, and on the first position is uh, Scots pine. So both uh, these conifers are uh, extremely uh, vulnerable uh, to be uh, affected by by insect. Uh, so uh, we actually uh, wager on a very sensitive uh, tree species. Uh, that's uh, current situation. However, what about 
uh, uh, future situation? What about um, uh, scenarios of uh, global climate change? If we would take it for uh, our country, uh, you will see that uh, the scenarios for the future are even much worse. Uh, there is um, evaluation of uh, future perspective of Norway's proofs in our country. And you can see that especially for the period of 2041 to 2060, which is very close period uh, to uh, nowadays, uh, the Norway spruce will have serious uh, problems on majority of our country. And again, there is a, on uh, right uh, uh, right corner, there is a, a map of uh, salvage felling uh, in 2018. And you also can see some similarities that uh, on areas where uh, uh, bad uh, growing conditions uh, were predicted for the future on these areas, uh, even in uh, 2018, uh, Norway spruce was dying very fast. Uh, however, if we compare it with uh, Cecil Oak, the situation is uh, absolutely different for Cecil Oak. We can see that uh, many areas uh, that uh, were uh, now or uh, in, in the past uh, out of uh, its, uh, out of its uh, uh, suitable growing conditions, mainly due to high humidity, start, uh, will start to be uh, suitable or even optimal in the future. So in general, this uh, this is some picture uh, that uh, uh, it's uh, very risky to uh, to uh, calculate only with one tree spe one tree species in the uh, forest and uh, composition and uh, usually it's uh, really necessary to have much uh, tree species uh, in the forest and uh, to avoid um, uh, problems in the future and uh, to get over uh, potential obstacles in the future uh, and to avoid uh, large scale uh, disturbances. Uh, what about tree species composition and uh, the, uh, the options how to prevent uh, uh, large scale uh, disturbance uh, by bark beetle? Uh, actually, the situation will happen or is happening right now in the Czech Republic. There is a nice uh, case study of uh, uh, my colleagues uh, from uh, Silva Tarosi Research Institute, a uh, lab of uh, old growth, old, old growth uh, forest uh, research. Uh, they observed two uh, situations uh, in the area and uh, in uh, buffer zone of to, uh, to uh, forest reserves. One of them was uh, Joffin Virgin Forest and the second one, Bobin Virgin Forest. Both of them were uh, affected uh, in uh, 2007 and 2008 respectively by two windstorms. And um, uh, of course, uh, after that, uh, there uh, started some bar beetle outbreak. Uh, they uh, tried to investigate uh, which uh, or actually uh, which mechanisms and uh, which patterns are the driven patterns for, uh, for following uh, bark beetle outbreak and uh, infection uh, on particular trees. So there is uh, the map of uh, Joffin Virgin Forest. Uh, they took areas uh, with different uh, tree species composition, both uh, in buffer zone of the forest reserve and within uh, uh, forest reserve, because also in the uh, in, in the virgin forest there were some areas where beech or spruce were dominating. Of course, in in um, in structured uh, forest stands, and uh, what they observed uh, when they uh, did the the evaluation on uh, different uh, scale uh, sampling scales. Uh, in all different sampling scales, the result was that about 35 deciduous uh, trees per hectare, uh, uh, if they have well developed crown, if they are in the high from 10 to 30 ten, uh, meters, and if they are distributed randomly, uh, can significantly reduce the density 
of infected Norway spruces. Uh, that's clear uh, evidence of importance of mixture. Uh, in addition, they uh, found out that uh, uh, the effect of deciduous trees uh, that are higher than 30 meters uh, is only partial. Uh, so that's clear uh, evidence of importance of the structure. It means to encourage trees that are uh, below the main canopy layer. Uh, in areas of uh, old growth forest where there was lower admixture of spruce, uh, bark beetle didn't affect uh, the nearest tree of Norway spruce automatically. Uh, so uh, there were uh, uh, clear evidence that beech is inhibiting uh, the spreading out of uh, volatile compounds and um, th thus uh, the Norway spruce has a higher resistance in the mixture with beech. Uh, as a silviculture output for us, uh, it is clear that uh, the systematic su support of uh, broadleaf, especially when they have intermediate uh, position is a crucial and uh, that the single tree mixture is uh, of, of broadleaf and, and conifers is the best in terms of, of uh, uh, forest uh, uh, resilience. Uh, okay, forest structure uh, and uh, its ability to prevent draw stress. There is some a general uh, figure of uh, the uh, driven forces and of the water transport uh, through the tree. What is important is uh, this slide. Uh, there, uh, there are uh, results about uh, the relationship of uh, air temperature and relative air humidity, where you can see that this increasing temperature relative air humidity is uh, decreasing. And what is uh, what is also uh, very important is uh, this uh, figure on right uh, that is showing the intensity of subflow. And it is, uh, it is evident that uh, uh, the low intensity of subflow is when the, uh, wet, uh, when the air is wet and soil is dry or wet. On, on the other hand, uh, high intensity of subflow is happening when uh, the air is dry and wet uh, and soil is wet. This is very important and I will talk about it uh, even uh, uh, later or better said about uh, consequences of this. And uh, what about mechanism and uh, mechanisms and driving, uh, driving forces in trees? operating the water transport, uh, both if we are talking about water transport within the tree and uh, between the tree and its, uh, in, uh, and its environment. Uh, this is driven by water potential gradient and water potential gradient uh, is based on uh, the main factors uh, as follows, air temperature, relative humidity, wind speed, and soil moisture. What is also important in terms of uh, how to prevent draw stress in, uh, uh, in, the, in the forest stands is that uh, the same tree species have different, uh, have a, a different, uh, um, different resilience and uh, mm, uh, yeah, different uh, resilience to draw stress and different um, uh, water demands uh, within uh, different growing stages. And at the same conditions, uh, there are huge differences between three species. What does it mean? Uh, so, transpiration is very sensitive to environmental conditions. Uh, air humidity determines the potential transpiration, uh, while soil moisture regulates current transpiration. And as different they are, as high uh, draw stress acts. It means if we want to uh, minimize this uh, difference as much as possible, we have to avoid clear cuts because clear cuts means uh, 
leads to, uh, to decrease uh, air humidity. What is also crucial is uh, that the Norway spruce is uh, very sensitive to draw, uh, for example, compared to spot spine, as I said, and uh, also that the uh, Norway spruce has a uh, different uh, sensitivity to draw stress uh, uh, during its uh, ontog ontogenetic development. So if we want to enhance its resilience, uh, I mean resilience of Norway spruce to draw, we have to reduce its uh, transpiration and, sorry, and um, that is possible to, uh, uh, to make it uh, through the forest mixture. And of course, it's uh, possible to make it through having uh, trees in different drawing stages within uh, particular forest stands. Just uh, very briefly, so uh, for the uh, transpiration, uh, uh, the, the crucial is uh, uh, for, for the intensity of transpiration, crucial uh, is uh, wind uh, and wind speed, relative air humidity, soil moisture and temperature. Uh, that are the most important microclimatic conditions. Uh, on the other hand, uh, circulation of dry air is even more important than the temp air temperature. And uh, if uh, we want to uh, mitigate long-term draw stress, we have to support uh, we, we have to support uh, air humidity in the crown layer, and we have to avoid uh, measures that are decreasing air humidity. In general, these all, uh, these all uh, requirements uh, means that we have to start to care about uh, microclimate of the forest stands. It means uh, to encourage forest structure, uh, mainly through uh, through uh, f forestry uh, measures uh, or silviculture measures that uh, avoids clear uh, fellings uh, to encourage heterogeneity uh, of the canopy surface uh, and uh, to, uh, to en encourage uh, forest mixture, uh, both in terms of three species mixture and uh, three dimensions mixture. Uh, some very short brief note, uh, co uh, colleagues from uh, our research uh, institute uh, evaluated 22 dry periods on our permanent list, uh, research plots, and uh, there is possible to see Shall how, yeah. how important, yourself ready. You got up to soccer. Yeah. How, how important is uh, um, uh, the mixture of uh, different tree species, uh, of uh, tree species with uh, different demands uh, on water, uh, because um, uh, because in the same uh, plot and at, uh, and under the same draw stress, a European beach uh, that is having uh, a much deeper root system uh, had uh, had constant. Uh, uh, soil moisture from uh, upper soil horizon to the depths of 50 centimeters, whereas on the left you can see how uh, Norway spruce uh, young stand was uh, uh, utilizing only water from upper soil horizon. So uh, after that they did uh, modeling and calculations uh, and from uh, these uh, models uh, they um, they proved that uh, if we want to avoid uh, to, to decrease of uh, uh, soil moisture uh, below the point of uh, decreased availability uh, of the water in the soil for plants, we uh, should have uh, about 30% of admixture of European beech uh, in Norway spruce stands. Well, so. Yeah, I don't know why it doesn't work. Uh, now, uh, yeah, 
now it works. So uh, as I uh, presented, uh, lower susceptibility for uh, susceptibility for damages uh, and uh, uh, the ways how to make forest stable uh, can be uh, clearly um, achieved by applying of continuing cover forestry. What about better economic uh, performance or uh, the issue of uh, of uh, productive uh, forest stands? And I mean productive forest stands uh, also in terms of their uh, pr production safe and uh, uh, production uh, permanent uh, permanentness. Uh, uh, I, I would like to present here a uh, case study case study uh, that is uh, focused on this uh, specific issue and uh, I, I will start it uh, with uh, the issue of nature automation that is typical for continue cover forestry uh, and uh, yeah uh, I will start with uh, with the positive influence of uh, uh, overstory on uh, growth and uh, uh, quality development of uh, uh, forest understory. Uh, we observed uh, and in detail uh, measured more than 6,000 uh, uh, 6, individuals at the age of five to 20 years, uh, individuals of uh, European beach in uh, uh, different uh, variables. And uh, it was uh, it was done uh, within the different regeneration settings. Here you can see the table. There were thirty seven research plots representing shelter wood cut gap cuts, uh, small clearing, and uh, large clearings. Uh, the quality uh, was the quality was uh, evaluated based on this quality scale and uh, we clearly proved that uh, there is a significant influence of light conditions on morphological uh, quality of uh, European beach. It means uh, high quality beaches of quality classes one and two are growing under the shelter uh, and whereas uh, the lower quality uh, beaches are growing uh, within the uh, open uh, canopy conditions. It's possible to see it also here. You can see the portion of particular, uh, particular uh, quality classes uh, and uh, especially in terms of shelter wood cut and gap cut, you can see that high quality individuals are prevailing. I mean, uh, quality classes one and two, whereas uh, if we are uh, going to uh, small and uh, even more to large clearing, uh, the quality is shifted towards uh, lower quality. Uh, yeah, to, towards lower quality. Uh, just uh, some uh, uh, brief comment. Uh, all of them uh, were planted in the uh, in the same uh, spacing one to one meter, it means uh, 10,000 uh, individuals per hectare. Uh, in addition to this, this has uh, also, uh, or even, uh, even, even deeper consequences. Uh, we uh, took uh, 96 individuals from from these regeneration fellings, uh, 24 from every particular regeneration felling, and uh, we uh, focused on uh, morphological patterns, detailed morphological patterns, and uh, from this evaluation, uh, from this research, uh, we found out that uh, uh, there was a significant di differences between uh, branch zenithal angle. Uh, I mean, this angle uh, between the uh, between uh, the leader shot and the, the, the branch. Uh, 
whereas uh, there was uh, no significant uh, there were no significant differences between branch stamp ratio it means that even two same individuals that have uh, right now the same quality but they are growing uh, within different uh, regeneration filling have different perspectives of future development quality development uh, it means as a uh, smaller uh, zenithal angle is as higher uh, probability of uh, quality decrease in the future uh, is. Uh, and uh, that was typical for both clearing, small and even the large one, even more. Uh, another evaluation uh, with respect to uh, nature automation uh, was done in terms to uh, observed how uh, how uh, the forest and overstory can influence growth and stability uh, features of uh, the understory. Uh, we did this uh, research on Norway spruce. Uh, we uh, observed more than 1,200 uh, individuals ranging from the high from 10 centimeters to nearly four and a half meters. And uh, there were measured seven morphological parameters and density. Uh, the results are that uh, there is a, a huge uh, predisposition for uh, photomorphological plasticity in Norway spruce. Uh, these all uh, changes uh, are happening mainly at the level of uh, high growth and lateral crown and life crown lengths uh, development. Uh, so rel mainly relative high growth, apical dominance ratio and relative crown lengths. Uh, there was proof positive development of high diameter ratio. So uh, the mechanical stability uh, of young Norway spruces were, uh, were uh, encouraged by the shelter. And that was because uh, the, di the diameter, the thickness was not correlating with the light. However, uh, the uh, the height, the total height, and uh, uh, high increment was correlating with uh, with uh, light conditions. So, uh, under control of of the above uh, of the overstory shelter, uh, the mechanical features in terms of lower high diameter ratio uh, was uh, significant. We also focus on uh, the effect of shelter wood cut on uh, forest production and stability of mature Norway spruces uh, through uh, the dendrochronological analysis. Uh, we took uh, more than 480 samples from 80 trees uh, from the uh, stem base, uh, half of stem and from the base of uh, life crown. It's mean, it means from the first uh, living whorl. And uh, there was clearly proved that uh, within the shelter wood cut and gap cut, uh, the allocation of increment goes to basal part of the stem. So it's making A-shaped stems. Uh, con convergent stems. Uh, however, uh, around the clearings and uh, large clearings, uh, there were higher uh, allocation in increment to higher parts of the stem, uh, mainly to uh, the, uh, the base of, of the crown. And this has consequences with center of gravity. So it means within the shelter wood cut and around the gap cut, there is uh, the mechanical stability is improving, whereas uh, around the clearings, uh, the mechanical stability is decreasing. Uh, it has also consequences with forest production because the highest increment in total was observed uh, in 
uh, or within Shelterwood Cut. And uh, of course, if we would uh, consider uh, uh, the increment of value uh, close to uh, Gap Cut and mainly within Shelterwood Cut, uh, it was uh, th the increment was uh, allocated into basal parts of the stem. It means into uh, most uh, into parts with the highest uh, value. So the difference would be even even bigger in uh, consideration of uh, increment of value. I don't know why it doesn't work. Now it works. So uh, yeah, if we are talking about continued cover forestry, definitely uh, uh, we we can uh, we can prove that uh, there is a better economic performance and that uh, we are uh, making. Uh, forest stands more productive through this uh, silviculture approach. And now what about improved uh, suitability for multi-purpose forestry or better said, uh, what to do? Uh, and is it possible to achieve uh, through continued cover forestry uh, forests uh, more appropriate for forest functions and services. Uh, let's uh, have a look on this uh, issue through uh, through the uh, ecological balance of the forest stands. And uh, I I will present this on the uh, on the uh, example of uh, case study of my colleagues uh, from Brno. Uh, and uh, the issue of carbon sequestration. Uh, th there was uh, an observation of uh, mid ecosystem uh, uh, exchange uh, within the um, uh, ecosystem, uh, uh, ecosystem station riots. Uh, it was done for six years uh, in the period of 2012 to 2017. And here you can see uh or better said on on the on the pictures there are no huge differences in terms of uh net uh, or the, the gray is uh, uh the, the gray is uh, a gross primary production uh, the the black is um, the black is a stem carbon allocation it, it doesn't seem that uh, there are huge uh, differences uh, especially if we would consider that it was taken in this period of uh, 2012 to 2017, and uh, you can see how different uh, amount of uh, annual uh, precipitation there was, despite we know that this is not a uh, representative feature. However, uh, the mean annual uh, net ecosystem exchange uh, was uh, very similar. Uh, on uh, within these uh, six years. Uh, also, there were some similarities uh, about carbon allocation to STEM and uh, its portion on net ecosystem exchange. However, if we would go uh, deeper in this uh, issue, there is a figure showing how the uh, carbon allocation is uh, to the STEM is uh, going uh, within the year. Uh, and a very important uh, periods are uh, 170th day and 230th day within the year, day of the year, because uh, in the in the first uh, point uh, the um, uh, primary growth is uh, actually finished. It means uh, the uh, the shots uh, growth uh, is finished and all uh, all. Um, uh, assimilation tissues are uh, created for that year. And uh, in this period from uh, 170 to 230 day of year, uh, it's period where most of uh, carbon is sequestrated into uh, the wood formation or better said into the uh, secondary uh, wall uh, cells formation. So it's the period uh, of intensive uh, uh, stem carbon allocation. However, uh, when they 
observed uh, the situation of uh, the uh, ecosystem station uh, and they did it uh, based on uh, uh, based on a precipitation evapotranspiration index uh, they found that this is also a period of uh, high probability of uh, draw stress so this a bit uh, tricky figure means uh, they took uh, precipitation uh, uh, evaporation index and compared it with uh, stem radial increment, stem carbon allocation, and net ecosystem production. And in case of uh, stem radial increment and stem carbon allocation, there is possible to see that uh, in the beginning of growing season, it, uh, there is a negative correlation. So it means it's more dependent on, uh, on air temperature uh, because it can be uh, expected that the, the soil uh, has uh, enough uh, uh, water uh, saturation from the winter time. However, since approximately uh, June or July, the trend is shifted and uh, stem uh, radial increment and stem carbon allocation is much more dependent on. Uh, so, so yeah, uh, uh, it, it means that uh, our, okay. Uh, uh, so the, uh, yeah, stem uh, radial increment and stem carbon allocation are dependent since June or July, much more on uh, precipitation uh, evaporation uh, index. And that means it's much more dependent on, uh, on uh, water availability. Uh, and it's also the time, uh, as we saw, when the, uh, when the carbon is intensively allocated uh, to the stem. So it means, uh, well, when we want to avoid or when we want to meet uh, as high uh, forest uh, services in terms of carbon sequestration as possible, we have to also deal with its vitality because despite uh, net ecosystem exchange is usually very similar and you can see here uh, the comparison of the year 2012 that was uh, very good uh, in terms of uh, precipitation and extreme year of 2015. There were more or less the same uh, net ecosystem uh, exchanges. However, there were huge differences in terms of uh, how large uh, portion of this uh, ecosystem, uh, net ecosystem exchange, how large portion of carbon was sequestrated in the stem. And you can see how low portion it was uh, under draw stress and how high portion it was, uh, it was under, uh, under, uh, uh, under standard or, uh, or uh, good, good year. And uh, yeah, as a consequence, then uh, we, we, have to, uh, we have to consider draw stress not only as an issue for vitality and survival of forestants, but also as an uh, issue uh, for uh, for fulfilling the ecosystem services and uh, ecosystem functions and these uh, requirements from uh, human society on multi multi-purpose forestry. So, uh, yeah, I, I will go uh, fast through through this uh, end of the presentation. Three species composition for extraction and silviculture me measures that minimize draw stress uh, are important not only for uh, for uh, pr production of the forestants, but uh, also uh, important uh, measure to prevent draw stress, also for fulfilling uh, various ecosystem services. Okay. Uh, I don't know why uh, it doesn't work. Uh, yeah. Okay, that's great. Yeah, that, 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 that finished. Uh, but that was very interesting, very detailed, a lot of very good research there, I think. Um, one of the, a very simple question that came up um, midway through from James Ramsker Gardner was, are your sawmills and timber market able to accept such a broad range of tree species instead of just a handful of commercial mainstays? Yeah, it, uh, 
uh, oftenly discussed issue. Uh, of course, uh, our timber market uh, um, has been uh, focused on uh, conifer uh, tree species, mainly on uh, Norway spruce. Uh, but uh, the situation is because of there are uh, usually uh, big uh, sawmills, uh, and uh, then there is uh, th there is a miss of uh, let's say uh, mid. A diamond or, or, or mid-size uh, uh, sawmills, and then uh, there are only uh, some uh, small sawmills. So uh, actually, uh, also the forestry is under pressure of uh, of the uh, timber market, uh, and uh, was trying to uh, to offer what the forestry industry required. But on the other hand, we have to. Uh, we have to uh, interrupt uh, this uh, this uh, mechanism, and uh, if we want to have uh, better forest stand, uh, resilient forest stand, we have to uh, focus on what uh, to do from the perspective of forest and uh, wood industry should uh, adapt to uh, what is coming on the uh, tin uh, wood market. Fair enough. Thank you. Um, there's a question from Paula Malley. Is there an average stocking density that occurs in a natural forest? Uh, you mean uh, the portion, yeah? Of, uh, maybe, and uh, can, can you repeat the question? Yeah, is, is there an average stocking density? So I guess the number of trees per square meter, the number of trees that, you know, you, you normally would plant them at a certain density, but I think he's wondering, was there an average stocking density that occurs as a forest naturally regenerates? Would that be correct, Paul? Um, yeah. On your mic, if you like. Yeah. Yeah, that's 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 about it. Um, I, I know it's it's going to change different parts of a tree's life in different um, ground conditions, things like that. But is there some natural balance a, a forest will achieve that's something we should be striving for? Sorry, I I don't understand now, now the question. Can you repeat it again? Oh, oh, uh, maybe oh, 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 you take that question. I, I suppose I suppose is there a natural? I mean, every forest is different. Every uh, you know, <laughs> in a natural forest, you could you're going to have a range of speed, a range of tree sizes. You're going to have from the seedling to the sapling to the to the you know the, the pole size up to the medium large and the, so you're going to have a yeah. huge range of trees and that will change across the uh, across the forest so in essence is there a, a, a number you should be aiming for not really because every forest is different in every kind of species I, I i i i would think as long as you have forest cover and you have a range of different species and a different tree sizes within your forest that's what you should be aiming for yeah i i think this this is uh, difficult to answer for uh, all uh, different uh, growing conditions and uh, uh, three species uh, composition. Uh, yeah, in general, uh, we, we should uh, start it with the number of target trees that uh, we want to have uh, at the at the age uh, at the stage of maturity, and uh, then to have some uh, some candidates. Uh, for these trees, and uh, then you can count uh, the number of uh, trees you should have at the beginning uh, of the process. Uh, if if I would answer to that, to to, to say uh, some certain numbers. It, it varies. It just varies across sites. Yeah. Varies very much across sites and across across areas and across species. You can start out with ten. I mean, Pavel mentioned ten thousand trees per hectare at the beginning, and but there are some forests, you know, it just yeah, in, varies in, very in, hugely. In yeah, yeah, Frederick. But in case of uh, artificial regeneration, yeah, was, yeah, yeah, uh, I understand uh, that. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Under under uh, artificial uh, or uh, under uh, artificial regeneration under conversion of three species com composition you have to start with uh, artificial regeneration of course yes. and uh, we have uh, we have forest uh, act uh, in our country that is even 
saying this uh, number uh, very in detail. So you have particular tree species, uh, for example, broadleaf usually uh, um, in case of beech, usually more than uh, 900, uh, 9,000 uh, per hectare. So uh, foresters are applying usually this spacing one to one meter and applying uh, 10,000 uh, 10, individuals per hectare. In case of uh, Norway spruce, we have also uh, the minimum uh, numbers uh, and uh, at that case uh, it uh, depends on uh, also on site conditions yeah, for example yeah. uh, if you have site conditions that are uh, enriched by water you have uh, lower uh, numbers than uh, on uh, let's say uh, uh, nutrient uh, rich sites and so on i suppose maybe maybe liam we might bring it across to the uh, the idea of how how continuous cover forestry maybe addresses how it may affect um, the Irish conditions. Would that be okay, Liam? That'd be great. No, yeah. I, 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 I think so, Paul. I, I, I think yeah. you know, um, we're very well aware that we have different conditions here than continental than continental Europe and Pavel's home country. But there are warning signs out there, and you know, we only have to look at um Kalara and Ash. I can I can, I can, I can address those now, Liam, if you wish. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I suppose. I mean, in essence, we have we have three three main. Uh, if you think about it, um, we have uh, we 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 the fact that we have one main big species, uh, and and it's mo mostly in a monoculture. And from Pavel's talk, we could learn basically, you know, the, how the effect of one one beetle has such an effect on on one species, even. And um, we've learned, as Liam was just saying. Even from the monocultures in uh, in 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 larch and in in ash, uh, like our woodlands are basically monocultures of different species. So they are. So we've we've learned from 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 the experience of ash over the last uh, ten years and 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 larch, where our, our, our we're planting our blocks blocks in pure species, how it has a devastating effect. And the potential for the effect on spruce, you know, we may not we, we may not attain the same drought conditions or, or the same conditions over time, but the threat is there the whole time. Uh, the other one that you mentioned as well, uh, well, and the solution for that is as you're suggesting is mixed species in in, in all in, in in all scenarios. The second one I think then is the wind, and like that's you're the abiotic, and that is a big element in the. Um, in 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 an Irish condition in our in our climb in our uh, position on the west coast of Europe, and wind, and one of the uh, elements we promote in pro silva silviculture is that we can pr promote stability. So that's a, a kind of giving a resilience, uh, an early stability, and to assist against wind. We don't wind will affect trees or affect forests. But within a pro silva close to nature managed forest, we suggest that it, it, there is more stability and your inherent stability. Uh, if, if when you start telling and even at the beginning are going through the transformation stages. But the other side of it is that if you do get storm, you will have that understory there ready to take over. So that is a second. That is an, 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 a, a, a second a, a, a element. And, and I suppose the third element I just mentioned is from last week. Uh, there was a wonderful um, webinar by the Irish Forest Owners, where you had Dr. David Stiles and Gary Lanigan and Dr. Uh, Dr. Bl and um, Kevin Black speaking on, you know, carbon and sequestration in Irish forestry. And the one message, uh, two messages, uh, one message I got, or two, I should say, one was, okay, we're going to have to plant an awful lot more forest to help mitigate our land use uh, carbon emissions. But the other message I took from it was addressing our existing forests and addressing the management and true CCF is another strong element helping that's going to help towards mitigation or uh, or, 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 um, or carbon emissions so uh, those are from an Irish perspective and you know from you Pavel uh, you, you you've given us a kind of very detailed a good technical overview of you know the position but uh, and, and promoting how how um, forest uh, you know, tree species uh, uh, compositions and forest structure and the civil cultural means are, you know, you've outlined 
quite differently how those can improve um, uh, forest, uh, you know, for, uh, mitigation against climate, 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 climate change effects on our forests. So, um, so like that's you, you've shown that, and those conditions, those situations will apply to the Irish forests as well. Yeah. You know? Great, then, thanks, Porik. Sorry, I, I, there's I, a question coming in here. Can I? Do you want to? You have something you want to say, Liam, or can we go to the question? Yeah, I, I, I think just ultimately, also without scaremongering or saying in the Irish context. It's just like any good investment manager, it's about diversi uh, diversifying and reducing risk by introducing diversity into the forest. It's reducing risks. Yeah. Yes, good point. Um, a question from Brian Walsh regarding the monospecies approach in Ireland. Will things change without the big players like Quilsha getting involved or are they already aware of this? Uh, already aware and actively involved in implementing CCF. Uh, particularly through a bioclass program in their um, old woodland sites and also into some of their commercial sites. Uh, very committed, we've two very active uh, pro member, um, Quilcher members on our own committee, Karen Woods and Janice Fuller. And uh, Porig would even know more, have a greater um, insight into their activities, but I think they're quite engaged and aware of the potential of CCF and the importance of it, haven't they, Porig? Yeah, uh, uh, yesterday I was out with the uh, odd staff uh, on, on BAU6 on on training and introduction to continuous cover forestry with all the staff, uh, management staff in um, BAU6, the southern region. So, and that's being done across all the things. So there, there is a, a, a very ready uh, acceptance and knowledge of, of, of it um, with increase. Is it worth mentioning um, the grant here? That, that uh, yeah. De definitely, Anna, just about that. And um, that's from the Department of, of Forest Service are also very aware of its potential. To, and going back for uh, approximately three years now, they've introduced the Woodland Improvement CCF scheme, which supports private woodland owners in transforming their forests from, from even age or from um, what age to CCF permanent forest structure. And there is a uh, there is um, a support scheme available for that. So uh, the, the, uh, or, there are many Irish forestry stakeholders, including the universities, including organisations like Chagas as well, very actively involved. Jonathan Spatsy there is very involved in delivering training. Uh, last week, there was a, 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 the minister launched a Martelloscope training for woodland owners at Oak Park in Carlow. So there's a lot of the... Irish forestry stakeholders very engaged with introducing and developing CCF in Ireland. Great. Any other questions here um, to the floor? If not, we might have a look at what the next steps are and what's coming up next for ProSilva. Give one more minute. What, one thing just on Pavel's presentation, and I, I think it's yeah. something we, we, uh, we often discuss in maybe somewhat abstract terms, the importance of retaining broad leaves in and promoting broad leaves in conifers. And sometimes we just think of it as something for biodiversity, for habitat, maybe for birds, for wildlife or whatever else. But Pavel's um, presentation really highlighted, I thought it was, it, it was uh, fantastic. Uh, 30 odd, 32 to 36 beech trees in this per hectare in a spruce plantation reduced the risk of, um, uh, uh, of climate change, acted as a climate change mitigation by retaining moisture in the soils. And I thought that was incredible. And that's a real economic benefit of maintaining diversity in our woodlands, not just for habitat, but also an economic benefit to it. And that's what I say, sometimes we talk about these in an abstract term, and it was great to see the economic benefit of that, um, Pavel. And it, it, that's something even in Scandinavia, where they practice very high production forests, the value of uh, cohabiting broad leaves with conifers. And I thought that was fascinating, Pavel, the way you actually had the, the scientific uh, proof behind that. Uh, Liam, it was uh, it was about um, uh, the draw stress, uh, yeah, draw stress avoidance, and uh, there was a, uh, there was a case study of uh, my colleagues that was uh, showing thirty percent, thirty percent. 
you, the, the, the number you mentioned about uh, 32 to 36 uh, trees, it was for, um, uh, for uh, to, to prevent a uh, bark beetle outbreak and spreading of uh, the bark beetles. So uh, if we would uh, talk about uh, prevalence of uh, of draw stress, then the the portion will be higher. Just okay. great. Okay. So no no more questions. People are saying he's giving us some very good feedback, very interesting talk. So thank you for the positive feedback. Really appreciate it. Will I stick up the slide, um, Liam, for your next steps? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, we've um, look forward to it. it, it it's great to be. Uh, it, it, it's great to be meeting and engaging with people um, in the forest again. We have our spring field day in uh, um, at Clara Woods in County Wicklow on the 23rd of April. We have our, uh, our study uh, tour to the Black Forest in Germany uh, from the 19th to the 22nd of May, and there will be a circle going out in relation to this tomorrow, hopefully. And then we have our awesome field day, which is shared. Uh, our hosts are both Creelshire at the Oakwood property in Cavan and Chalvis Valley Hayes College in Cavan. And then there will be, there is up, uh, upcoming training uh, activities, including um, uh, the Department of Forest Service are currently um, uh, uh, developing a training course for registered foresters, which hopefully will be launched in June, and this will enable them to uh, both get a greater understanding of the potential of CCF and, and, and access the scheme, as well as many other. Um, so if we keep watching the um, ProSilver web, uh, uh, web and news feeds, and there will be other ProSilver training activities, as well as uh, Chagas are very active in the whole area of training as well. So they're, they're, the, they're the upcoming events, and as I say, it's great to be meeting people in the field again. Okay, that's great. I think I think we can draw the evening to conclude the conclusion then. Um, yeah. Thanks to, to Dr. Pavel Bednarz, thanks to Liam, and thanks to Porik um, for arranging this webinar and for making it happen. I suppose it's, it's been very interesting for me, certainly, and hopefully, I guess you've, a lot of you have stayed on the line, so I guess that you've enjoyed it. Um, I, we hope to see you again at more webinars in the future um, and at ProSilva events. Um, and thank you all for, for participating tonight.